Hello and welcome to Hexed Encountered. We will be taking a look at History Maker Golf. This is from Play Games and it is a, as you can see right here, championship golf simulation board game. So what I'm going to do here is actually there are a couple of different ways you can play this game. You can do match play or you can do a tournament. Now what really makes this game shine I think is tournament mode because it allows you to actually complete a tournament in a reasonable amount of time which is not the case with um, most other tabletop uh, golf games. So with that in mind, I'm going to kind of take you through a spin of how to do a tournament. Now, I only bought the kind of the base game and then I bought the how-to guide to make your own golfers. And I also bought Course Collection 20, which is different from most of the other golf course offerings in that it is not a real course. It is a series of various cards or whole cards that you can use to create your own courses. So I thought that was kind of cool. I do prefer fictional play and my own universes and things like that. So this really fits really into the paradigm of the way I would like to play the game. So with that in mind, I wanted to kind of go through how tournament mode works. So we're going to go through that from setup. We'll do a kind of a soup to, soup to nuts approach, I guess you might say. I'd like to start off just by talking about course cards. Now this is an actual course. This would be Augusta, which of course is pretty famous. And so you get 18 cards and this comes with the base game. So there's a hole here for uh, a card here rather for each hole and it'll show you the par number and the distance and then uh, the way the game works essentially and we'll get into specifics as we go go through things but just as a way of introduction if you think about um, baseball for example and history maker baseball in particular if you've played that game you have kind of a uh, who controls the action approach Right? This is kind of a staple for the history maker stable, I guess you might say, where you can have the pitcher control the action or the hitter control the action or offense, defense, however you want to, however you want to, you know, put it. With this one, you have an approach where the course, specifically the hole, controls the action or the golfer does. Here is a golfer card. Now, you might note that the uh, the whole card has four dice symbols on it, in this case. That varies from card to card. Now, on a six, the golfer will always control, and they'll have a decision to make on whether to be, I wouldn't say cautious necessarily, but to take a standard approach to the hole or to attack it. And we'll get into that when we do some gameplay stuff here in a little bit. But, in general, you roll, the, you roll dice, and based on the, the white die, will tell you whether the course controls. So in this case, hole one at Augusta, if you roll a two, three, four, or five, the hole controls the action. If you roll a one or a six, then your golfer would control the action. Now the other thing here is, unlike a lot of sports games, and again, if you're familiar with play games, you'll be familiar with this as well, the games don't use numbers per se. Now everything's based on numbers behind it, right? Every game is based on probability. That's why we roll dice, et cetera, et cetera. But what Keith Avalon has done here, as he's done in many of his other games, is he turns those into qualities. He turns the numbers into keywords and use the keywords to look up things on charts to determine whether or not something is true or false and what happens based on that. So you have a woods rating, an irons rating, a putting rating, a recovery rating, and then an experience rating. And then down here is a tournament rating where higher is better. So this, uh, this particular golfer, and this is from the 2010 Stars set that comes with the game, uh, Hao Tong Lee here, he's a 7, which means he's not a particularly good tournament golfer. So you have a number and then a letter grade, and the letter grade is kind of a way to subdivide the number grade. So someone like, say, a Tiger Woods would be like a 1A, which means he's basically one of the best, as you might expect. He would be one of the, you know, young, per perhaps up and coming, either a very young or an older golfer who's either in the, you know, on the uptake, upswing, or, you know, in the sunset twilight of their career. And then you have various things here. And just as in History Maker Baseball, again, and I know I'm referring back to that, but I know a lot of people have actually played that game. I have it. It's a very, very good game. The dot here indicates a semi-quality which means that you use a decider die, which is basically a D2. It's a D6 with three pips on it, three dots, and three blanks. So you roll that. If the pip appears, then 
he would be a legend. If the pip does not appear, he's not a legend kind of thing. So it's a 50-50 chance. He has that quality in a semi mode. So he is a semi legend, a semi bomber with woods, semi laser with irons, but he's always a hero. So there you go. And the putting is the same thing. A gold putter is obviously someone who's good at putting. He's a semi gold. So sometimes he'll be great. Sometimes he'll be average. And then you have a uh, semi prospect, which means he's kind of young, but he's, he's kind of approaching this, the, the area where he'll be not not a prospect any longer so you do get a ton of golfer cards i have already uh split them up and this is the stack of 2010 golfers and we will get into that the course collection 20 which is this guy right here right so this one is the course designers toolbox so this is a relatively new addition to their roster and i bought this because i thought it was a cool way to kind of make your own courses so i just want to kind of briefly show you what's in here so we have a description card here that talks about it's different than any other than any previous course collection. Everyone who plays golf board games wants vivid course imagery, but that poses problems with licensing of those images, both from court, the courses themselves and the photographers who took the pictures. For this set, we use public domain royalty free golf course images and ran them through a common filter to create a unified appearance. We then put together a data set for our collection based on the universe of course characteristics we wanted it to represent, and from that created individual profiles for each hole, assigned a specific golf course image, and built the course cards around these images one by one. The result is a colorful, evocative, and endlessly flexible build-your-own golf course collection made up of unique individual holes that convey some of the beauty and splendor of golf we hope you enjoy. So what does that look like? Well, here's a hole card for this, and you have... I believe it's 72 of these so you can build your own mix and match you can notice there's no numbers right so here we have uh, here we have hole one at uh, Kapalua right and here we have just this one kind of West Breeze does not have a number you can make it hole one you can make it hole seven 14 whatever you want Court, uh, holes will have characteristics, direct, friendly, and double cordial. DB always means double, which means twice um, twice as much. Cordial always means easy, relative. Um, so this is an easier hole. You can see it only controls on a five. So most of the time, the golfer will be controlling on this hole. And then we'll get into what all the symbology means on here. But obviously, you're rolling two dice. You go low to high. That's kind of an, another play, uh, common play games element. We roll two dice, you go low to high, so you'll get a number ranging from 11 to 66. You get information, it's a par 5, 545 yards, and then you have Claremont, par 5, 515. So all it looks like all the par 5s are kind of together. Then you have some par 4s, and you notice the various uh, kind of pictures here. You know, this one's more watery. This one's in the colors, black, green, blue. So there are three, I think, different types. So yeah, there's basically, I think, three or four courses worth of cards in here. And so you can mix and match and make your own golf course. And it goes all the way down, of course, to par threes, such as this one. So this one would be semi-challenging and cordial. And it controls on a four and a five. And then it tells you a little bit about it. Before T, choose whether to play safe or go for it. Scenic but challenging tee shot over water for birdie or play right and hope to chip in. So there is some strategy involved occasionally, depending on what you roll. We're going to use this, and I'm going to put together a course with this. I'll probably just pick one of the colors to keep it simple. I'll set them up in a certain order. We'll build out a course, and then uh, we will play that course in, a tor in tournament mode. So let's talk about tournament mode so here we have the card for it and i don't want to show this too much because it's got the all the die roll stuff on it but basically you do the first two rounds with all when you roll for making the cut then you'll do the third round and more with golfers who made the cut and then you complete that and then you go into the uh, staging for the final round and then you'll play out the final round hole by hole and in this way you're able to actually play the entire tournament in a reasonable amount of time well the first thing we need to do is take our card our golfer cards right 
So I don't want to look at who these are because I don't want to color anything in any way. So what the directions say to do is to shuffle all the cards, which I've already done. Then if there's more than 100, which I think there are, we found it uh, works best, and I'm reading off the card here, to divide into two stacks. So we do that, like so, and shuffle separately. It might help to think about it as half the staff is half the stack rather is the morning group and the other half is the afternoon group. So you divide the morning stack into eight piles, and then you would do the same with the afternoon stack. Uh, more or less equal, similar sized uh, stacks placed face down on the table. Stacks should be roughly equal, but there's no need to count cards. Just eyeball it until all the stacks are about the same height. Then for each of the eight stacks, roll two dice and read them in ascending order based on the making the cart. Making the cut chart. Okay, so here we have our eight piles. So this is the morning group, right? Now the next thing we'll have to do is roll two dice. Now the game comes with dice and uh, some poker chips. Uh, the, the play game which I'm with which I'm most familiar is actually red, white, and blue racing. And, and we see these and think of performance chips. So it's the same kind of concept. But the dice that this game uses, here's our decider die. So as I said, it's kind of a, a D2 effectively. We've got three dots and then three blank sides. So we won't be using that for this, but we have a white die. We have a uh, metallic die, that's what uh, play calls it, and this is a die that exists in many of their games. We have a black die, and we have a green die. And then we also have a little meeple guy here that we can use to kind of denote when we're playing the game, we denote which golfer is active when we're looking at golfer cards. So I'm going to take the black and the white and we'll just use that. And let me grab my dice tower. I'll put that right here. Slide these down a little bit and we'll just start rolling. And we get a 35. You always read low to high. So if this was a three and that was a five, it would still be 35. So three, five is draw two golfers top, and then choose top three remaining. Okay, so you start at your first pile, and it says take two do two golfers, right? So we draw out two, and we get, and again, this is the 2010 stars. We get Webb Simpson and Mark Wilson. Okay, so these guys made the cut. Then we choose the next three highest. So there are four left in the pile, and this is where you look at their tournament ratings. All right, so you start with the numbers, and you can see we've got a two, five a four and two five b's so that's going to end up being a tie so our two b martin kamer he automatically gets in and then uh ernie ells would also automatically get in then you have these two who are a tie so i could put them both in and there's really no harm in doing that or you could do some kind of roll off it's really up to you how you want to determine that so maybe we do the cider die and if it's a pip We'll take Bay, and if it's not, we'll take Palmer. It's not, so we'll take Palmer. And so Bay is out. It's just easier, I guess, that way, maybe. It, like I said, it really doesn't matter, and you can do whatever you want. So we'll move on to our second one, and this time we get a 23. And the 23 is draw one golfer, and then the top two remaining. So we take the top guy, Brooks Kepka. So he's in, and he's a 1B. Obviously, he's a good, good golfer. Then we're going to take the next two highest. So we have Rory McIlroy as a 1A. He's in. And then we'll have, we have a 2C, Sergio Garcia. So he's in. So Walker, Crane, and Shoffle don't make it. Shoffley, sorry. Next, third pile, 15. So 15 is draw four golfers and then the top remaining. So that's almost the whole pile, I think. We've got one, two, three, four, five. So yeah, they all make it. So Duffner's in, Lee Westwood, Thomas Bjorn, Jim Furyk, Brendan Steele, and Kevin Na. All of these guys make the cut. Let me go to our next pile. Roll again. 
56. 56 is draw one and choose top five. So again, the whole pile is going to make it. But we have Bill Haas, Tommy Fleetwood, Adam Scott, Ricky Fowler, Phil Mickelson, and Rafa Cabrera Bello. So all of those guys make it. And there's only, I mean, if you look at the numbers here on the chart, you can see there's a lot of one combinations, fewer twos, fewer threes, and only one in the six, six range. So that's just kind of how that works out. When you use this system for dice. So 35, we've had 35 before, I'm pretty sure. It's top, it's choose two, and then the top, uh, top three remaining, which I think is, there's four. So one, one guy won't make it. So, Hal Tong Lee makes it, and Henrik Stenson is the other one who automatically gets in, and then the other ones are going to be based on their tournament grade. So, we have 5B, 2B, 3C, and 3B. So, it's going to end up being these three guys. So, Clark is out. We get Justin Rose, Louis Osteisen, and Billy Horschel. Another 56, so again, this is going to be one and then top five, which I think will be end up being everybody. So the highest one is Bryson DeChambeau. So he'll automatically get in. And then there are five others, Points, Bradley, Kevin Streelman, Peter Hansen, and Cam Smith. So they are in. And we'll roll one more time. We've got two left to do. 16, and 16 is... Draw five and one remaining. So there are exactly six here. So all of these guys will make it. So Choi is in. Zach Johnson. Jordan Spieth. Mark Leishman. Or Leishman. And uh, I, I have a, I'll have a hard time pronouncing his name. Kiradek. Uh, a Finn Bonerat. And Ian Poulter. They're all in. And the last pile. 26. 26 is four golfers and the top two remaining. So again, this is going to be the whole pile, basically. All right, so. Snedeker, Paul Casey, Patrick Reed, and Chris Kirk. They get the auto in. And then the, the last remaining one, Anir Bond Lahiri, also in. And then we would repeat the process with our afternoon group. Okay, so we resume here, same thing, 16, that is top, draw five, and then the top remaining, uh, one, two, let's see, there are two, well, here we'll go one, Matt Wallace in, Tiger Woods in, Dustin Johnson in, that's three, Alex Norin in, that's four, Darren Clark, five, and uh, automatically gets added. Jonathan Vegas. All right, and we roll again. 26 for golfers and the top two remaining. So again, this is gonna end up being this whole pile. So we've got Scott Stallings, Bubba Watson, John Rahm and JB Holmes. And then our last two in would be Ryan Moore and Terrell Hatton. All right. Oops. 25. So this is three golfers and the top two remaining. So Brendan Grace and Francesco Molinari. And Luke Donald, those are the three. And then the next two are Kevin Kisner and Carl Schwartzel. All right. 16 again. So we know this is, if there are six here, that's going to be everybody. Patrick Cantley. Aaron Brad, uh, Badley. Russell Henley. Steve Stricker, and Greg Chalmers. So I might not have needed to do this. We've only eliminated like four guys here. 
uh, 35. 35 is two golfers, top three remaining. Now what we're looking for kind of is an outstanding golfer, but we don't have one of those yet. Daniel Berger in. Jason Day in. Thomas Peters in. And then our last two, Justin Thomas and Russell Knox. Uh, 36. Two golfers and three remaining golfers. Uh, again, I think there's only five here. There are only five here. I need to sleeve these so they'll be a little easier to handle, but I'm not done that yet. Matt Kuchar. Hideki Matsuyama. And Hunter Mann. Or Mayhem. Sorry. Dylan Fratelli, and Brendan Todd. Two left, 46. I roll six every, sixes every time. So this is going to be everybody, so I'll just go through it real quick. TRC and uh, the Born Olsen. And actually, one guy is out because there's six here, and we don't, so, uh, well, we would have started at this end. So let me do this the right way. So Blixt is in, that's one, and then the top four remaining. So that would be these four, and Scott Piercy does not make it. So Thor Bjorn, Olsen, Shane Lowry, Danny Willett, and Gary Woodland. And we'll roll again. 34. Ah, good, we got an outstanding. So you draw one, and it becomes an outstanding golfer. So outstanding, before I flip it. Golfers are considered to have had exceptionally good scores for the first two rounds and are placed in a separate outstanding performer stack for the third round process. So this is the last stack. We're only going to have one. And that one is Graham McDowell. So he's going to be an outstanding golfer. He gets his own pile. And then the other we draw top three remaining. So that means that Jeff Ogilvie will not make it. And Siwoo Kim Charlie Hoffman, and Nick Watney will make it. So that would complete the making the cut, which covers the first two rounds, which we do for all golfers. Then for the third round, making the cut, it says to conduct the third round of the tournament, the cards of the golfer, golfers who made the cut will be arranged in seven new final round stacks. The cards of any outstanding golfers will make, will comprise an ace stack. So now we have to get, use our grade cards. These are our grade cards. You have A, it's like uh, almost like um, school grades. It goes down to D minus. So there's no Fs, but you get A, A minus, no A plus either, and B plus B, B minus, etc. You get the picture. So we would spread these out. So you go through each of the seven stacks, which I haven't done yet. So I'll be taking all these guys right here. Now again, he's his own thing because he's outstanding. But we're going to take this group and we're going to make seven stacks out of it. And I'll do that in a minute off camera so that you don't have to wait. So we'll do that and then we'll follow the, uh, we'll do the, some die rolls again and it'll tell us where to put them. Okay, so we do the same thing. We roll dice and we read low to high, 46. And 46 on the completing the third round chart says draw golfer contends with A minus. So we take someone from our first pile. It's Carl Schwarzel. He gets an A minus. So he gets to go right here. And it says take the low golfer, and he contends, uh, he finishes with a D minus, others finish with D. So we look at what we've got here, and you find the lowest guy. Which right now is Daniel Berger. It looks like he is our lowest guy. He gets a D minus, and then everyone else gets a D. So they would go in that pile. And we roll again, and we get a 14. And a 14 is draw top golfer contends with A, others finish with C. When we look for the best, so Tiger's a 1C. Anybody better than that? Probably not. No. So Tiger gets... 
Uh, he gets an A, and everyone else gets a C. Let's put them there. And we'll roll for our third pile. 45. Draw golfer contends with a... And that's Luke Donald. So he gets an A, and he gets to roll on the... You can see down here it says gets placement and a roll on the 20 day perks and issues chart for added intrigue. So we would roll one die and then this will tell us something about him. So let's just do that right now. And he gets a two, which is sponsor money provision. So we roll again. And it's also a two. Game gain stormy quality, so he gets a stormy quality, and we'll talk about that when we get into uh, the game itself a little bit later. But I'll make a note of that right now. I needed to roll for our eighth stack, which is Graham McDonald. So let me just do that real quick too. He's got a thirty-six, which is top golfer contends with A minus. So he's A minus. Put him right there. Then we'll move to this stack. 34. 34 is draw golfer contends with A. So Danny Willett gets an A. And low golfer D minus. So Greg Chalmers is a 7A. He's almost certainly going to be the, le the lowest. And yes. So he gets a D minus and everyone else gets a D. All right. Now we roll again. 14 again. <clears throat> Draw uh, top golfer rather contends with an A, so we'll find our top guy. And that would be yeah, a 3A. That might be the best so far in Kuchar. Kuchar. So Kuchar gets an A. Others finish with C. All right. 46. 46 is draw golfer contends with A minus, low with D minus, others D. Shane Lowry gets an A minus. I'm going to move my pencil out of the way. Low gets a D minus, which basically means he's not going to be participating in the. Uh, so we have a 5C. I think that's the lowest. We have two 5Cs, actually. So I'll just do the, the cider die again. It is a no pip, so that means we'll give it to Streelman. He was second. And he'll be the D minus, and everybody else is a D, which is not good because there was some good ones in there as well. All right, two stacks to go. 25. Draw golfer contends with A. Kevin Kisner. Top golfer contends with A minus. Got, no, Justin Rose is up. Oh, we got a one. There's Jordan Spieth. And he's our top. So he's an A minus. Others finish with C. All right. Last pile. 25. 25 is what we just had, so we know that the draw golfer gets an A. That's Brooks Kepka. And the high, the high one, highest remaining, a lot of fours in here. We have a 3C, we have a 2B. Henrik Stenson gets it. So Henrik Stenson gets the A minus, and the rest of these guys go into the C pile. Okay, so we've now reached the stage where we would draw for the final round. So basically you're looking for contenders. So the way the game is set up, which is the case with a lot of play games, is they want to take like a television approach to the tournament, where you're, it's almost like you're watching it on TV, right? We have final round staging here. So we're going to have placements for A golfers and then B and B plus, B plus and B and then B minus. So what we're looking for, I believe, is to get, I think, 12. So as we go to do this, what we need to do is you basically, you need 12 golfers. And we have 11 here. We have six in the A column and five in the A minus column. So these are typically the columns where you're going to get your so-called contenders from, and then you could promote a B plus or a B into that if you needed a, you know, needed to fill it out. We don't have any Bs. 
We do have C's, a whole bunch of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find any ones in here. If we have any, or two at, at, at worst. I had a brief pause there, so I am now back. So what I was going to do was I was going to take these two guys here to fill, figure out the 12th for our contenders. But on, in retrospect, I won't do it. We'll just have 11. We'll have a ghost, um, you know, a ghost golfer, so to speak, with whoever is in 11th. And we'll put these guys back in their C pile where they were and just leave it at that. Okay, so the next thing you have to do is you figure out your scoring for your contending golfers. So you see here at the bottom of our sheet, we have any golfer with an A placement of any kind. A plus A or A minus is considered to be a contender. And they're given a three-round score and will be featured in History Maker Golf's hold-by-hold -hold telecast of the final round of the tournament. To calculate the three-round scores for all the contending golfers, use the scoring key cross-referencing the golfer placement with the actual winning score of a recent event at the actual course. Now that is going to be an issue because we're not using an actual course. I did set up, and we're just using the beach, the, the beach, or the water course, I guess is what you might call it. So I put this together, they're in, they're in, a, you know, in order. We've got our mixtures of fours, threes, and fives here. 18 holes of golf that we'll use for our final round. Now we have here, you have various ranges, right? So you have under 263, 263 to 267, 268, et cetera, et cetera, right? So I'm going to roll 1d6, and I'm going to let that decide what the score is. So a 1 will be the lowest, a 6 will be the highest, and then we'll have 2 and 5 be the next lowest, next highest, and a 3 or a 4 will be right in the middle, like an average. So we'll roll our white die, and we get a 3. So it's average. So that would be a 268 to 272. I've moved all the, basically, the non-contenders off camera. There is a way to generate scores for them, and we'll talk about that later, potentially. So what I did was I put the, all the A golfers, we didn't have any A pluses, we had put all the A golfers kind of in tournament ranking order. So Kepka is the highest ranked of these guys, and then we have Tiger, Kuchar, Willett, Donald, and Kisner. So you're going to roll for each guy, and we just roll the decider die. And basically, using the average score of 268 to 272, so let's roll for Kepka. he got a blank. So the blank would give him the, high, the higher score, which would be 202. So I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put him here, and then if anyone gets a 201, they'll go on this side. So next we'll roll for Tiger, and he got the, the dot, so he will be the 201. And we'll just do it this way. So Kuchar gets a 201, Willett gets a 202, Donald gets a 202, and Kisner gets a 201. So we're going to have a three-way tie for the lead. Tiger, Kuchar, Kuchar, and Kisner will all get 201s, and we'll write that in here on the sheet, and I'll do that off camera to save time. Then we'll have Donald, Willett, and Kepka will each... We'll just flip these guys around again. We'll have 202. Now we'll do our A A minus golfers the same way. And actually, I'm sorry, it's not 201 and 202. That's the A plus scores. This would be 203 and 204. So these are A minuses. They'll get 205s or 206s. We'll put them again in order, like so. So uh, Jordan Spieth will be first. He gets the dot, so he gets the lower score, which in this case is 205. Henrik Stenson gets a 206. McDowell gets a 205. Schwarzel gets a 206. And a 206 for Lowry. So that is the scores. I can now remove these cards as well. Go ahead and gather all our stuff together here because we're about to get into the actual tournament itself. So I'm going to fill out the sheet and we're going to use this, this sheet. And you can see here that the score sheet is staggered, right? So again, it's going to be like a television presentation, essentially. So our first pairing will be the lowest rated guy. So it'll be, you know, like uh, Lowry and Schwartzel maybe will be here. And then we'll have McDowell and... Stenson maybe and so on and so forth. So when they're on hole one, no one else is on the course. When they get to hole two, then the second pairing comes out and so on. So they'll play 
one and two, and then when they play two, second pairing will play one, and then when the second when they go to three, the second pairing's on two and one. You're used to this if you're familiar with golf, right? So we'll go all the way through the six pairings, and the leaders will be in the sixth pairing. So I'll probably put Tiger and uh, Kuchar in the last. Yeah, Tiger and Kuchar will be our final pairing. And then we also have the potential for making a move, which probably won't happen in this one because we don't have any Bs. We had A's, A minuses, and then we had C, D, and D minus. So those guys probably won't actually make it. There is, however, in the there is a full leaderboard method that comes with that goes all the way down to D minus, and it'll tell you what the what scores to give people. So again, we may or may not do that towards the end. I did want to mention it, however. So I'm going to get this set up and we're going to do a, do the final round of the tournament and you'll see hole by hole how it plays. We will be starting on this this hole right here, Arroyo Almar. And, uh, you know, we'll start with that and go through each of these holes. But because of the length of the video, I want to keep things relatively short. This is part one. So part two will actually have the first holes of our tournament. And we'll see how we, how we go, how we get along, how long the video becomes, and determine whether or not I want to split that into part two and part three as far as the playthrough of the actual final round. So this was basically your tournament setup and get up, getting us to the final round. And then the final round will be in part two and potentially part three if I decide to split it up based on length. So for now, that is going to do it. Please feel free, if you wit, if you want to, to give me a like, share, or possibly a subscription if you're not already a subscriber. That is always appreciated. It helps support my channel. Gives me some positive feedback and, you know, a reason to continue doing this. But um, even if you don't, I hope you'll come back and watch future videos and uh, that you found this one at least and at least somewhat entertaining and or enlightening in some way. I do appreciate you taking the time to watch. That it will do it. My name's Joe. This is the Hexed Encounter channel, the sports edition. And until next time, as always, happy gaming.